Hey stamping friends, this technique is called Pinwheel Tower Card. And if you are out on Pinterest or um, various places online, or you probably have seen the Pinwheel Tower Card and it can be different shapes and sizes. This is actually going to fit into our medium size envelope, our standard card size. And for those dimensions, um, that's what is reflected on your instruction card. It was going to be almost impossible to create a miniature card, so I have a photo here of the top part of the card to kind of give you some of the details for a visual when you want to recreate this card. So let's get started. Our card base is everything you need in your packet is there. You are going to need a strong adhesive, stamp and seal plus or tear and tape, your regular adhesive and mini glue dots along with a paper snips to cut the strong, or I guess this is tear and tape, so you don't really even need that. So um, let's get started. So this is already pre-scored for you, but I wanna show you um, how I have done that. I actually um, cut the cardstock when it's eight and a half here at six and a half, and I scored two, the piece before I cut it in half. So if you're making one card, you're going to cut it to six and a quarter by four and a quarter or leave it at eight and a half by six and a quarter. Your score marks are going to be at two and three quarters, three and three quarters, four and three quarters, and five and three quarters. That's going to leave you a half inch um, panel at the end. My advice is to use our whisper white or, or basic white or very vanilla not a thick cardstock. It gets too much bulk in the middle. So now what you want to do is take a bone folder and, oh, I can reach one from here. I forgot to bring it over to the table. So what you want to do is take a bone folder in each one of these tabs. Oh, that has a dimensional on it. Oh, goodness. Um, every tab crease to be a mountain. A mountain, mountain fold is where it comes up. And when you do that, you're gonna be able to create this square in the middle with this panel on this side. We want this square to be perfect, and because this is a smaller tab here, you're not gonna put it to the center. And we wanna make sure that this is perfect square, that it will flatten and reopen for us. The best way I know how to do that is lay it flat on the table, Fold that small panel in the next panel to be on the top. Then on the bottom, you have two smaller, two panels and the large panel. Fold it flat on the table like that, and then apply your strong adhesive. I am going to use one strip of tear and tape, and tear and tape is a strong adhesive. I am not going to right to the edge of the cardstock. You don't need to do that um, because it's strong enough. You don't want exposed adhesive. Put some pressure down, take a take your pick tool, works good. Fingernails to get that backing off. Hold this all flat to the table. And the small panels up, one additional panel. There's three panels on the bottom, including this large one, and you're just gonna fold this down and that will adhere it to those exact location you need it to be so it is still goes flat in any of the directions. So now we are going to complete the tower, the mechanics of it. We already have one panel on here. It was part of the core of this card. Your cardstock you need for this is three additional, additional pieces that are two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And they are going to be these other panels. So this first one I found the best one to assemble is the one that meets up to this wall and goes like that. So I also found that I found it best to put that one on first. What I do is I lay this flat, put adhesive just on this side of the tower, just two strips down, regular, your favorite double stick adhesive. I stand it back up. So my tower's on the table, this panel's on the table. I meet up to this wall and then I slide it over to meet up to this. That will allow this to fall. It allows everything to line up good. Then I go to, my next one is this. So I'm lining it up here because it allows me to meet that wall for getting that aligned right. So I'm going to flatten this, 
put adhesive just on this panel, stand it back up, have the table surface, table surface, and then up to this wall and push that to this panel. And then I've adhered that one. And then I have one more. This will be the last one right here. So then you just flatten that, two strips of adhesive. The beauty of the video, I know I'm going too fast to stay up, it's caught up to me, but you can hit pause and get caught up before you hit play again. That is the mechanics. And the beauty of this, it is going to go flat in any of these fashions to fit into your envelope. So now it's decorating. So the decorating, you're going to decorate each panel with a two and a half. So you need four places, two and a half by four inch panel. And we are using the Expressions and in Ink Designer Series paper. And that's gonna be for the main panel. The back side of the other panel, you can decorate with a one and a half inch strip by four. And they are the same design as these pieces here. Um, this paper is beautiful. It actually is, um, at the time I'm filming this, it's again, not orderable. Expected delivery um, into Stampin' Up's off, our distribution center is August, the week of August 2nd. So a couple weeks, it'll be available again. And it's a specialty paper. You can see the gold pieces here. But it's 12 by 12 and they've got some pieces have a decorative image. So some of the strips, all of the, all of the pieces are going to look different because we're taking 12 by 12 and cutting them down. So you're going to get a different section of that paper. This piece here I thought would be perfect for signing the cards, putting your, you know, happy birthday or whatever your sentiment to the, who you're giving it to. So these two pieces are going to be in the back. You need to determine what you want on the front of your card. I chose these two pieces. So I'm going to put this piece here and this piece here. You decide there's no right or wrong whether you want to rotate them or leave them or your orientation. And then what's ever on this panel is going to be visible when it's closed. You can choose any of the ones that you want. I would advise you to keep that one maybe to the back. So you can choose. I'm going to put this one here. So the one that I assemble first is this one. And the reason I do that is when I get that all lined up, then I can use the top and bottom as my guide to continue. And so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to adhere this one first. Use your regular adhesive put it on the back of the designer series paper, decide which you want up or down, you know, or at the top or bottom. Then I'm going to watch these three sides to get equal spacing and place that down. I'm going to flip this like this and then adhere this panel. And um, I cut several of these and um, I'm hoping they all line up for you. And um, sometimes they just might be off a hair. You need to go to a paper trimmer to fix them. But I'm going to go ahead and just um, envision that they're all equal. So now I can line this one up. And there you go. So that's going to be the front of the card. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work, work my way this way. I'm going to now choose this one to put down. So I'm going to do that next. And we'll put adhesive on here. And then I'm going to watch the two sides. Try to get everything lined up good here. I'm going to put the matching piece here. The beauty of this paper has got two sides. You might like this side better. You just choose which side you want to adhere. And I'm going to place this here. Then I'm going to go like this. Then it's going to be these two pieces. And this is the one that maybe in your packet it's the same. You've got a lot of white space. It's a perfect area to sign the card. And we'll place this here. Then this piece, or you could use the other side. Like I said, the beauty of this is you can use any side that you like. It's absolutely beautiful paper. That's why they're hard to, it's hard for them to keep it in stock right now. It's absolutely beautiful. 
but it's in the annual catalog so it's available to us until um, next spring end of April before the new annual catalog comes out so now we're back to the front and this is how the front is and now when you stand it up on the tower and look at your card depending on what direction you're looking at it you're going to see some beautiful paper I'm going to consider this the front I'm going to decorate the card with the brilliant wings dies these are in the annual catalog I did not cut the largest die or the I cut the next four dies there's a larger butterfly and there's one additional smaller butterfly when you decorate these panels there's a couple things to keep in mind you do not want to go beyond this fold because when the card flattens it's going to crease that you also only on the front panel can you extend beyond that otherwise it won't fit in the envelope if it's folded differently and I would advise you to use mini glue dots to attach everything or your regular adhesive because um, you, you are, this is a, a folded card that you're decorating all sides of it. And I'm going to put a couple mini glue dots on each butterfly, turn it over and make sure that that butterfly has no exposed adhesive on the other side. So I'm going to bring those mini glue dots in. And, and this is the only one that can extend off the edge. So I'm going to extend that off just a tad bit. And I'm going to move that up a little bit, like so. Then I'm going to go on this side. And here, if you put a butterfly um, if I put another large butterfly and only part of it gets exposed, keep that in mind. I'm going to choose to put the little butterfly tucked away in here so when it's opened, it's not visible. So again, as I mentioned, mini glue dots. And most of the time I choose to put a couple mini glue dots on for time and video purposes. I'm only going to put one on and I'm going to have this fly this way. Maybe I'll put it down here. It doesn't matter if it's on the top or bottom, but my goal is to have it not visible, but you could have it visible. That's just a choice. Now, when I go to this side, it, it's not going to matter which one I put where for visible when the person takes it out of the envelope and looks at it. So just make sure that these mini glue dots aren't exposed. I'm going to fill in this white space like so. And then, oops, I told you I couldn't expose that off the edge and I just did. But I think I'll be okay as long as the card's folded like this in the front and the back. This one needs to stay within that panel. So um, it should be okay. And the main thing is that nothing gets right to that crease because it'll the butterflies will bend up there. And whatever you do choose to put here. So I'm going to just have this butterfly here. So now we've got our butterflies. This is perfect spot to sign the card. And there you have a pinwheel tower card in your packet. I don't know where it went off to, but there should be an oval that's already cut and I stamped thinking of you on mine. Again, no dimensionals, just have a flat um, adhesive and place that down and you can choose not to put that. And um, because this all flattens down, I did not even add any embellishments to the butterflies, but there's many things you could put on here to decorate it. And I hope this video was helpful for assembling the pinwheel tower card. Thank you everybody, take care, chat soon.